we made it to Portland. We are currently in our hotel room waiting to go get registered for the conference, but I think we're all really excited and yeah, we're gonna do some exploring and see where the day takes us. sessions in the keynote speaker. And the first session was called Institutional Betrayal, Courage, and Healing from a Community-Based Model of Activism and Resiliency. So this was a couple of students and a staff member from the University of Portland, which is a private Catholic school here, and they just shared some of the experiences that they have here and um, the lack of resources and lack of activism that happens on the campus and it just really gave me a good perspective. Being at Iowa State, sometimes you don't really think about other universities or institutions and the things that they have. And although it's not perfect, Iowa State does have a lot of resources for students who feel welcomed, feel like they belong, things like that, which the University of Portland does not necessarily have. So it gave me a good perspective on that. Also talked about resiliency and how telling someone they're resilient or strong for the things they go through is like putting a band-aid on a, on a bullet hole and not questioning why it's there in the first place, which I thought was a really good point. The keynote speaker was really good. They talked about the poor people campaign and kind of just the struggles in the different groups that are um, in poverty and struggling through that and just the lack of awareness and the lack of activism for the poor. And then the second session was our dear friend Durga, and she killed it. She talked about um, music activism, and we analyzed a couple songs and music videos, and it was really, it was really good. It was active, and I think we all had a lot of fun and are proud of her. So that was the first day, and I'm excited to see what is in store for today. I would also meet with urban Indian communities all throughout Turtle Island as more than 70% of our... Hi everyone. I'm gonna go over some of, of the takeaways that I got from day number two. And so my favorite session was the first session that I went to. It was called Grown Black Women Voice Framework. And so it was pretty much just a room full of black women. And they talked about things like the narrative that black women live out and how everyone's is different and they also talked a lot about how growing up as a black woman sometimes you're forced to grow up quicker and that was kind of eye-opening to me because I have been privileged in my childhood and that's not always the case for everyone and so that was very interesting. They also covered things like what a voice is so a voice can be things that you say like your vocal voice or it can be your intentions intentionality things like that or your critical expression so the way you dress or your hair things like that which i also thought was interesting and gave me a new perspective on your voice and it's kind of just like different ways that you can express yourself so those are the biggest things that i got out of today it was really cool to be in a room and hear a bunch of different people's perspectives and people that might look like me but experience completely different things. So. This cafe was pretty good, I thought. Hey everyone, I'm back and I'm gonna talk about day three. So, um, the biggest thing I got out of day three was the use of trauma as a teaching tool. This session mostly talked about DEI training for staff and how there are people of 
color are typically thrown into this training being used as a tool. Their experience is being used as a tool and they're forced to open up about things that could have been traumatic in the past that they have to revisit for their other staff and faculty members to benefit from. So it kind of gave a new perspective on that. And I don't really thought about that, but it makes a lot of sense on how that can be traumatizing and how different strategies should be used for DEI trainings instead of trauma. So. <laughs> That's how I start every clip. Uh, um, I am going to talk about the last day and then just kind of wrap up my thoughts. So, let's just jump right in. My biggest takeaway was from the session that was called, I can't believe these books are still in our library. And so this wasn't a session that I would normally go to, but me and a couple of the other students were like, we're just gonna walk in and sit down at some random session and hope for the best. <laughs> so that's what we did. And it turned out being a really good one. I learned about things that I wouldn't normally seek out. A takeaway that I got was that I don't really know where I stand with what books should be in libraries and what books not, because there are many arguments on a topic like this, like, oh, this is offensive. It shouldn't be um, in a library for people to rent out or to purchase. But then there's also the argument that if you're taking out these books, it's like you're erasing history. You're acting like that didn't happen. So I thought these were both really good sides and I don't know where the line is for that. So this was a good session to get me thinking about things that I don't normally think of. Overall, just a really good and interesting session and I'm glad that I attended it. Encore 2022 has officially come to an end and I feel grateful that I got to be a part of this. I made a lot of new friends and we all got to experience some cool things and learn a lot. And I'm excited for this fall and I score in the spring. So stay tuned, but I'm just feeling grateful to have gotten to experience this. So.